Hi guys and welcome again to another preview. Uh, tomorrow uh, we are going to preview the Seppelt McKinnon Stakes over 2,000 metres and online we've got Trevor Lawson, our Victorian analyst. And uh, Trev, how are you? Good, Daniel. Yeah, good. Uh, as you can see there, guys, on the page uh, with our Melbourne ratings package again, uh, Trev's been highly successful over a long period of time. If you've got any queries at all or you're interested in the package, please get in touch, 1300 500 057, or alternatively email us at team at championbets.com.au. Trev, I'm going to throw over to you. Uh, interesting race with a fairly dominant favourite in um, Blair House. Yeah, yeah, it's also extremely hard to beat on its um, run last time. Okay, here we go. Okay, is it crossed over? Yep. Okay. So, um, yes, yeah, this is McKinnon Stakes. Um, the map, uh, smallish field. Um, the map sees uh, Trap Falls leading. Uh, Latrobe on its videos out of Europe has got some sort of pace. It does take a little bit of time to get going, but does race forward. Um, Blair House will sort of sit just off the pace of a midfield-ish. Uh, Mickey Blue Eyes, one of the three-year-olds, will get back with Shia and Octobello. Uh, Extra Brute has been going back, but there's sort of no speed in this race, I thought, and Williams... We'll sort of know that on the map. It has gone forward in the past, so with 51 kilos, I've sort of mapped it to go forward, but it may go back. It's a bit hard. <clears throat> and doubt to find he's sort of going to be caught sort of wide. He may push on as well. But the known is that sort of trap for falls to lead. Um, it probably won't be that quickly run. Uh, we go through the horses. so. Um, just so I do a lot to start at the bottom. So the first horse is uh, Mickey Blue Eyes. Um, he's backing up from the derby. Um, so they had no luck. You can see in the comments he was held up from the 500 to the 200 um, and basically was taken out of the race. His previous start at Mooney Valley, that was on sort of the track where you sort of need to be near the fence and um, he covered plenty of ground. Um, the start before was on a slow track. Um, he sort of did 57 and a half to start before on my figures. Um, the market, the past two runs, has sort of said he's going to do 55 and a half, 57. Um, I put him in at 57, um, which is not a very high number. Um, extra brute. Uh, you can see he basically progressed every run. He started off at sort of 48 and a half, jumped to 52 and a half, 57, 59. And then he hit the wet track at Caulfield in a slowly run race and um, he basically held his ground, didn't sort of lose any ground off the leader. And then he won the derby where it sort of quickly run last that day. He's on the quick back up here, seven days. Uh, we has a good record doing this. Um, Cliff Sedge ran in this race last year and basically was there till the shadows of the post when beaten by the stable mate. Um, I just left him at that figure. It's a peak figure, but he's not going to do any better than that. So I was happy to sort of just to leave him at that figure and see what the market looked like, see what it looked like, thinking he may Trip. roll forward. Yep. Trip. Query coming back from 2,500? Um, just with the, with the week and, um, yeah, he's going to be fit and he's got to turn a foot. So not really. So I, yep. Yeah, I'm not really, you know, sort of penalising for that. Um, I mean, it's one of the, those sort of things, I mean, you'll know afterwards, you know, it's sort of like, um, you know, it's a bit like Amphitrite yesterday. 
you know, you think you'll run the she'll run the trip, but evidently she pulled up with this show. But it's only after the race that you can make a decision whether the thing did or not. So I'm happy to say that it's not an issue going into this race. Yep. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Shailaya um, produced um, its um, figure the other day. 1600 it is on the quick backup. Uh, it's never raced past 1600. It's its first time at 2000. Um, so I didn't think it can improve at all. Um, I just was, I just sort of left it at the figure just to sort of see what the market looked like. Um, so I've just sort of left it at the 63. Uh, Latrobe is uh, overseas horse, evidently was here for the cup and uh, they ran out of time to get ready for the cup. Um, so they're running first up here. Um, he's 119 horse, uh, which equates to about 64 and a half on my ratings. Um, he beat Rostopovich at the Curra in June by half a length. Uh, Rostopovich ran in the Cox Plate and went sort of less than his SP and then ran in the Caulfield Cup. Ran, sorry, Flemington, um, Melbourne Cup. He ran fifth the other day, rating slightly down. Um, but I've put him in at 64 and a half. He was also beaten by Ben Batal. Ben Batal ran fifth and he ran 10th in a race as well. So he's met sort of Ben Batal, which sort of then you can line up through um, um, Blair House, because Blair House ran behind Ben Batal. So, you know, it's, it's sort of tricky horses to price, but I sort of put him in at 64 and a half to start with. Um, Octobello, I didn't think had the figures. Um, he's a 58 and a half horse. So, you know, the trade's like a 64. So the trade sort of got four links on him and not much in the weight. So I didn't think he had much hope. Um, Dad Defying, he produced a massive big peak figure at Ranwick and then he rated down winning the Sale Cup. So I didn't think he had enough quality either. Uh, Trap for Fools, it's just a terrific, honest horse. Uh, gives his all every start. You know, he's sort of done some 62 and a half, and 63. Uh, he's getting an easy lead here. Um, it's happy to sort of leave him at the 63. See what it looks like. Uh, Blair House, uh, his first run here in Australia, he ran in the Underwood. Um, he was slow out and then he ran pretty good sectionals home to run fourth. You can see here he ran um, the 21st quickest, you know, 200 of the day, he ran the same as Humidor who ran third. In that race, um, Holmesman then went to Caulfield, the Caulfield Cup and ran second. Uh, Humidor ran third in the Cox Plate. Um, so he was he was making sort of significant ground with those horses, and then last start he jumped better. He drew sort of one from the outside here, and he settled midfield, and then he came away with um, Ben Battle, and they beat him at all sort of by two and a half lengths. Uh, Cliff Samo here, yeah, who was sort of placed. Has run well in the sort of both the cups. Uh, Holmesman, who finished up running second in the Caulfield Cup after this run. So, this is a pretty high rating race. Ben Batal then went to the Cox Plate and ran second to Winks, um, producing a new peak. So, the market, you know, probably 
he did better than his SP, like he was 11 to 1, but he's a European horse having his second start in Australia and his first start, he didn't have much luck. So um, the market probably didn't know how to price him. And now he's had 28 days off. Um, and I would assume that he could reproduce this figure of 68 and a half. That's, uh, that's pretty handy ratings for this race, isn't it, uh, Trev? It's going to take something special yeah. to roll him on 68 and a half. Yeah, yeah nothing else. I mean, Latrobe's the unknown, and the others just don't have anywhere near you know, the sort of figures. So Price the Icon you know, hasn't won since I was at school. Um, you know, hasn't won since you know, won the Derby in 2016. Uh, he's consistent, but you can see here his figures are six. You know, he's a you know, five, five and a half length at their best behind sort of Playhouse and what Playhouse can do. Uh, and in somewhat, um, his last couple have been slightly disappointing. Um, he's rated down, but you can see back here earlier in the prep, he was a 62 and a half here, 62 and a half horse back in his heyday. He sort of had you know, done 64s. So I put him at 62 and a half. He is eight years old now and just see what it looks like. Um, and on that market, you sort of get, you know, Blair House, even money. Um, Latrobe, sort of around the $7. Uh, just depends what sort of um, time form rating you put for it. You know, Shiley, to me, is a $23 chance if it runs to its absolute. So there's every chance, you know, it should be longer. And the same thing with Extra Brute, you know, it's $5 a, so it's sort of $5.50 or $6 chance. Uh, so all things being equal, I think, you know, Blair House is uh, definitely the one to beat and should be extremely hard to beat. With the informed Charlie Appleby stable and uh, William Buick yeah. steering should be, uh, should get a nice run in transit and just storm over the top of them. Yes. Yeah. Interestingly, just I just noticed. You say even the handicap. So the, the handicap ratings has it. You know, as a hundred and thirteen horse and has it sort of clear of uh, Latrobe and Shilohar. So they've sort of ranked it uh, as sort of the best horse. But um, yeah, Charlie, you know, he sort of seems to know which horses to bring here, and um, um, they race well here. So. Trev, thank you again for another uh, fantastic review. Um, and, uh, yeah, all eyes will be on the McKinnon tomorrow in Flemington. You going? Uh, no, no, I don't. don't no, it's a bit, um, I'll be just here in the office trying to get a – trying to find a winner. All right, mate. Thanks again and uh, good luck. Great. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye.